Hi everyone, just a quick video to discuss Lockheed Martin's woes this morning. Quarter 3 earnings report came out and expectations were not as expected. A rather dramatic title here, supply chain woes, but stock has tumbled more than 10% now. And it's basically due to a reduction in revenue and projections of revenue being pushed to low single digits for 2022. Um, not ideal, not, not a good result by any means and... Well, we'll discuss whether I think the stock drop is justified or not. And so, as you can see now, it's a time of recording. It's roughly 11% down. And that puts it not far away from its 52-week low and definitely below its 50-day moving average. Um, miles off the highs. It's put the, pushed the market cap down to about $92 billion, And this gives it a P ratio of about 13, which, looking at the P ratio of the S&P, which is in you know in the high thirties at the minute, that seems entirely reasonable, and it almost seems like these type of woes are priced in. Um, anyway, we'll come back to the the fundamentals in a second. So jumping in deeper on what is going on with the sales and revenue, as you can see, quarter over quarter, struggling down down by five hundred million, recording sixteen billion in sales for the quarter. And this is compared to an estimate of about 17.1 billion that was expected. Not great. No way to spin that. Operating profit, okay. Like, pretty much achieved the operating profit. But again, that revenue's a pretty big miss. Like, 10% of the order of 10% region. That's a big miss. Um, so, jumping in deeper to see exactly what the cause of that was. As you've been expecting, it's 2021. It's supply chain issues. The uh, aeronautics and, and space division have been partic hit particularly hard. That's mainly because, you know, these are aeronautics is fighter jets like the F-35 program. These are huge, huge items, huge piece, pieces of machinery that require thousands of parts and a very complex supply chain. Any sort of supply chain delay and you can't be sending fighter jets and satellites and rockets out. Um because of the massive safety implications and just because they just won't work. So again, I've like I feel like this is mostly priced into the stock. I think a 13 times for a company like for a company like this, this is to be expected. Now, importantly, we are gonna see a sales miss probably for the full year. And into next year, the, the company management have promised that revenue will now be in the low single digits. So the positives of that is that while they won't, while they will not be focusing on revenue growth, that we're going to be taking up a rather defensive position and maintaining that low, low single digits of revenue growth for 2022. The positive of that is they have guaranteed that the priority is going to be returning cash to shareholders even more and maintaining cash flow to shareholders. So I don't think anyone's buying Lockheed Martin for a pure growth play. You know, it's a nearly $100 billion market cap defence company, and that is what it is. It's a defensive stock. It's an all-weather stock, and it's a dividend play. as a reliable and growing dividend of, like, 3%. That's much better than the S&P. And it's cheap. It's unlikely to get to get much worse than this for Lockheed Martin. And right now, I see it as this is a buying opportunity, certainly. The Lockheed Martin and defence companies in general are tied into long-term um, sales contracts, so they'll have billions in backlog, like multiples of revenue in back in of yearly revenue in backlog. So not particularly concerned about the future of Lockheed Martin. Because saying that it isn't a pure play growth company, as putting that aside, there is definitely growth to be had here. Of course, all 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 of those four main sale four main segments could grow fine. Particularly the one I'm most interested in is space. So as you can see, space is roughly at all, nearly 12 billion in sales this year is expected. 12 billion in expected sales puts that firmly in the bracket of mature companies in this industry. And this is an industry that is expected to grow at massive compound, an compound annual growth rates over the next 10, 20 years and even further. As the likes of SpaceX and Blue Origin are showing that, that they're really making a push into this industry and Lockheed Martin are hoping to guarantee themselves a spot. And with a 12 billion annual revenue in long-term contracts, I think that's a good starting point. They have a lot of cash on the balance sheet and a lot of cash flow available to them 
to push into this industry and that is definitely where the main drove, growth drivers are going to be. As you can see on screen, Kathy Wood is a holder of this stock, which is always nice to see. She believes in the, the growth of this company. It's at part of a, the ARK Space ETF and its current weighting is like 3.73%, so not huge, but quite big and I would expect her to buy to probably be buying today. She's bought several times this year, mostly in February and August when the stock price of Lockheed Martin was a bit depressed. But again, not not a huge, um, not a meaningful thing either way, but nice to see that it has some backing from an, an industry leader and someone who's on TV a lot, bluntly. So looking again at the fundamentals, it's much below its 52-week high, slightly, above, slightly higher than the lows, and it's cheap. Like I've mentioned a couple of times this video, a P ratio of 13 compared to the S&P, which you know, is about 39, that's three times less. This is a slow revenue growth company, and it's definitely going to be a slow revenue company over the the, sh the short term. These type of, these type of losses are because Wall Street thinks in six months, one year increments. Um, Lockheed Martin is a solid company and will continue to be a solid company, and I think it definitely has a place in the space industry in, in the coming years, and this will provide it with continuing revenue growth in the low single digits it's not going to blow the doors off but it's an important company and it pays shareholders well for holding so again three percent dividend yield frequent share buybacks and solid earnings on long-term contracts that give it a very good defensive property in my opinion and i certainly see this as a buy opportunity as i mentioned before i'm going to be loading up on some shares today and hopefully see um Bad performance in 2022, but while while prices remain this low, I'll definitely be buying. Thanks everyone, and I'd appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Thank you.